Hallelujah. Hey, you guys, listen. Let's tie this together. And this is very important. Now, Brenda and I are, are in a place of consecration right now. We're seeing the hand of God. God has performed some powerful things for us. God is with us. We believe that and, and we receive that. We're preparing to do some traveling. We're going to be doing, uh, um, we've been invited to do some ministry in the Dallas area, the 6th of August. It's going to be on a Friday night there, the 6th of August. It's going to be at the Iglesia de Dios Dunamis. That's 7041 Military Parkway right there in Dallas, Texas. And the zip code is 75227. That's going to be at 7 p.m. on that Friday night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And like I said, we are expecting it. We're going to be one of many speakers over the next few few days. Like I said, we're going to be we're going to be doing the speaking on Friday night, Brendan and myself. And then there's going to have a speaker on Saturday, I believe, and a speaker on Sunday. The service is going to be bilingual. So we want you to be able to come and be a partaker. Those of us, those that love us, we want to we want to impart something over you. Those that for all the years that we've been a ministry since 2013, we want to be able to bless you and speak a word over you, those that, and, and show our appreciation. Hallelujah. We want to release an anointing from this time that God has given us together. So let's tie this together. Before we go into this segment, if somebody was to give you an apple, if I was to give you an apple, and you eat the, 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 the meat of the apple and the seeds you would have no way to reproduce what you just ate the best way to deal with any type of fruit with seed if you if you want to get more of the same thing is you eat of the meat of the fruit and then plant the seeds Again, put those seeds in in very good ground, ground that's conducive to reproduce what you just ate. That's how it goes. Many people, when when they receive a blessing, they eat the fruit and the seeds, and they don't take the time to understand that there's a certain aspect of what you receive is meant to be sown to get more of the same thing that you that you just had. Now, I want you to think about this. Because a lot of people, when every, when, whenever you get a blessing, and this goes for you, this goes for me, I mean, the rules are the same. We are being tested with how we steward these things. Seriously. And Brenda and I, we go through tests all the time with the Lord. When we get blessed, we make sure that we take a portion of what we receive and we set it aside. And we make sure that when we sow it, that it is in good ground. And particularly those that have been a blessing to us, we want to make sure that we reciprocate that blessing because that's how it, that's that's how we operate. And it works for us. And I'm going to tie this together. And then because this morning we was out doing our early morning exercise and then they had some people out there playing football and um, they're getting ready for the season. Now, this is the thing. A couple of the young men have gotten healed out there. One last year, the, the year before, another one just this past year, and they're starting a new year now. And as we was walking, one of the guys, my, my Brenda heard it and said, I need prayer. I, I didn't pay it I didn't hear it. I mean, really. But she heard it, and then he said it again. I need prayer. I thought he might have been joking. But then it turned out he was not joking. He was dealing with pain in his knees. And then there was another one that was dealing with pain in their shoulder. Now, the only way they could know this is because the gentleman that had received prayer previously had told them that. And this is very powerful. Those young men came over. I touched, we held hands. We got in the circle. We prayed. And we spoke over them. And then the other one, I told one, because I guess he, he didn't think it serious. I told him this is serious business. So they subjected themselves. We, we prayed for them. I sp- spoke over them. And I covered them against COVID-19. I covered them against that. We covered them. Both of them got healed. One with the shoulder and the other one with both of the knees. Matter of fact, he felt so good. He started jumping. Hallelujah. You never know the type of impact that you're going to have on people's lives. 
And, you know, they know us because we don't distance ourselves from people. We believe in bringing the church out of the four walls. And this is going to be tied together to what we want to talk about. So dealing with this scripture, the, the subject of what we're going to talk about, I'm going to read the scripture first. And it's in Luke chapter 17, starting at verse number 11. And we cover those of you that are listening right now against the Delta virus. We cover you right now in the name of Jesus. We take authority over that right now. We cancel that, 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 that demonic activity against you in Jesus' name. I feel the presence of God. We cover you right now in the name of Jesus. We break the yoke of it. And I want you to touch. I want you to, to extend your hand towards I mean, I mean, towards your screen right now and receive the supernatural vaccine of the Spirit of God in your life right now. I feel impressed to speak this. I declare this right now. We speak life in Jesus' name. We break that spirit of infirmity now. Oh, my God. In the name of Jesus, we cancel this assignment. And for those that are dealing with pains in their body, we break those now, right now. We break them. I feel the presence of God. We break them right now. Pains, discomfort, Lord, touch, touch, touch everywhere on your body. That includes everywhere. I mean everywhere. Ears, eyes, everywhere. Everywhere. Touch that area right now. We come against the spirit of blindness. We come against the spirit of deafness. We come against every... Uh, uh, mm. In the name of Jesus, I feel the freedom of God right now. We pray deliverance. We we, we, do, we charge, hallelujah, total deliverance. Right. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord God, for a heavenly place. Thank you for the anointing that is moving across this segment. Bring forth, oh God, finances, oh God, for those that are listening right now, bring them forth in the name of Jesus. Bring them forth. We seal this word right now. Sickness and disease has no dominion over this segment right now. Poverty, we break it. Oh, God, we break it now in the name of Jesus. We seal this word. Hallelujah. Bring testimonies from this right now in Jesus' name. I feel the presence of God. Amen and amen. We're going to tie this together to something. Thank you, Jesus. I felt impressed to go in a different way. St. Luke chapter 17, verse 11 says, And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. They had to stand afar off because there was lepers back in those days. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them which saw that he was healed, wow, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, giving thanks, and he was a Samaritan. In other words, he was somebody who did not have a covenant. He was somebody that was, in those days, was considered a half-breed. They were not considered true Jews. All right. And Jesus answered and said, were not ten cleansed? Jesus said, like I said, Jesus knew that when he spoke, all of them knew was going to be healed. But where are the nine? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. So we see that he's a stranger. He he's he was was not a person of the promise, like the like the Jews were, hallelujah, like, like the nation of Israel was. But he came and gave thanks, and he said, "Arise, go thy way. Thy faith have made thee whole." There is a message in this, and we're going to tie this together. Where are the other nine in your life? Where are the other nine, hallelujah, that will return and give thanks? For, listen, before we go into this, let's be clear. If you're not called to do this, you quit. That's when you know that you are truly called of God. That in spite of everything that you see 
and you do from the pureness of your heart, you know you're called of God. Because if we, if we had anything other than pure motives, anything other than pure motives, we would not, you have to be called to do this. So we had a situation going back just um, a few days ago where somebody had called Brenda, called my wife, and told her about a time of going back weeks ago, going back weeks ago, going back a few weeks ago, that I had seen her out in the street and prayed over her and prophesied over her and spoke in regards to God blessing her financially. And, you know, I see so many people, we administer to so many people, I don't know, and, and I told her to call my wife, because, again, that's my wife. When you're dealing with women and women, I want to make sure that I honor my wife. I said, call her, you know. I And, you know, she said that a short time later, within about a day, a couple of days, everything that, that God had given me to tell her happened. And she got blessed. She turned around bought her a new car with it, with the blessing, was able to do some repairs on her house and everything else she, she was able to do. Now, this was weeks before, this was, I mean, this was weeks had, had, had passed, then she decides to call and tell my wife, this is, this is a couple weeks after the fact, and we're going to tie this together to this segment right here. And she told Brenda, basically, that you don't find a lot of people going out and doing what what we do out in the streets and she wished that more of that would be happening I'm paraphrasing and Brenda said well we welcome to work with you and teach you these were her words she said she already has a church and in, in, in the same breath she said she hadn't been in a while and also too we know that the church has been closed because of COVID-19 now I know the pastor I know him hallelujah and this is indicative of the things. I mean, where are the other nine? Now, now listen, we just saw Jesus himself who, you know, if anybody, like I said, Jesus, he had a question, where was the other nine? And he's our Lord and Savior. So you so you can imagine how Apostle Young feels sometimes. Now, now listen, this is not an isolated case. This happens to us all the time. This happens to us all the time. Seriously, it does. Now, this is this is no this, there's people that honor us as men and women of God. There's people that, you know, they appreciate us as men and women of God. But we have, but we have those that get blessed and they go on about their business. Either they 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 take the blessing and just just eat eat the apple and the seeds like they always do, or they go back and bless that dead work that that they're a part of. Now my pastor, Apostle Garrett, used to go through this all the time. So, so I understand this is how people would leave the church that there was because they couldn't get delivered what it was. They go get delivered and then they take their blessing and go back to that dead work. We had a situation in Dallas. So this is one, one where a person left where they was, came, got healed physically, physically. They, they were dealing with some serious issues. Got healed and a short time after they got healed, decided that they wanted to go back to where they was. This was when we was in Dallas, and then when we left, then we left to came here, and then months, years later, they send us an email saying they need prayer because they're sick again. So, listen, <laughs> listen, those of you that want to be used of God, this is the way it is. This is, these are the things that will happen to you. So you want to make sure that you're in the ministry for all the right reasons. Hear me clearly. But just like I said before, and as when we read this scripture, Jesus does make a statement. He says, was not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Hallelujah. And they did not return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Hallelujah. And he said, arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Listen, let me give everybody a word of advice here. For every blessing that you get, there's a test. And that applies to me too, that applies to Brenda, that applies to everybody that's listening. Because when you get blessed, guess what? You're going to need another blessing. Hear me clearly, you're going to need another blessing. And just like those people I used to see years ago, when I was part of the ministry up north, many people would come back at when they would need another blessing. 
But remember, God is the one that's judging and grading the report card. Remember this. We have to go to God on behalf of people. Hallelujah. God is the one that answers prayer. Hallelujah. So my advice to every one of you, first those that are in ministry, make sure you're in this for all the right reasons. Make sure that you're called of God because if you're in this for selfish reasons, you may not last. And for those of you that are smart, that take your blessing and run and thinking that you're not going to need another blessing somewhere in the near future, you want to reconsider your ways because your heart is not right before the Lord. And if the people that you are connected to do not have the power to, to, to either bring the healing to you or to pray or speak a word of blessing over you, that in itself is a message. That is a message. We've seen people get healed of COVID-19, different things like that. And some of the ministers that are mad with us need to be thanking us because many of those people that have gotten healed and delivered have stayed there and have been faithful members at their church and have been blessed behind something that they did not, that they did not pray for. So why are they mad with us? They're, they're being the recipients of the blessing. Does everybody understand that? They're being the recipients of the blessing, but yet they want to call us false prophets. They want to call us all of these different things, but yet they're enjoying the fruits of the blessing. Now, God takes good care of us, just so you know that. God takes good care of Brendan and myself. Holler, Sunday, because God is always going to do right by his apostle and his prophetess. He's always going to do right by us. If we do right by the people of God, we continue to love them unconditionally. And we keep on doing things with all the right motivation, holiday, because that's our assignment to go out of the four walls and, and do manif manifest the kingdom of God. There was not guaranteed that everybody would appreciate that. But, but God does, and God will make sure that he does right by us. And for those of you that have a call upon your life, you need to prepare yourself for that. God is always going to look after you. But when the judgment of God falls on people who do not do the right thing, don't be surprised because we've seen that. I saw that in the church that I came out of. So, backtrack. When God does something in your life, remember it's a test. And for those of you that are doing ministry and people disrespect you and forget about you, that can also be a test. Are you in it for the right reason? Hear me clearly. Are you in it for the right reason? Brenda and I have to sleep good knowing these things. Holiday, because again, our call is not unto men, but it's unto God. Oh my Jesus, it's unto God. And God will never, ever forget our labor of love. He will never, ever forget our labor of love. Hallelujah. And God told me some stuff. And this is the thing. And, and this is something that, that somebody can be blessed behind. God told me not to wear myself out behind people that do not want anything. That's what he told me. Oh, my Jesus, he told me that. And that's going to be a blessing for somebody else. Hallelujah. So, our time is precious. We're going to love God's people. Period. That's just the way it is. And if we, God forbid, all get offended and disrespected, we have to forgive them. We have to love them and move on. But always remember this. Listen, you only got so many opportunities to do right by people be before the, the before things start to happen in a different way for you. And that and the, and the rules apply to everybody. Nobody's exempt from that. I have I have an obligation to do right by people that have been a blessing to me. I have I have an obligation to do those things, whether it's give a testimony and in some cases sow seed. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. So, like I said, and we and we embrace those things. We appreciate and for all the people that have that have, that have been with us and have loved us, prayed for us. We thank you all humbly. But like I said, we're in this because God has called us. We refuse to manipulate people, beg people do all different types of stuff for anything. We're not going to do that. We have not had to do that since we started this ministry in 2013, and we're not going to do it. We know that God has given us a grace, and those that honor the grace on our lives, they, they receive the blessing behind that. That's just the way it is. Just like 
We have been blessed by the graces that we've honored and respected over the years. We've been blessed by those things. And this is and this is a win-win situation for everybody. So we want, we want to encourage you. But every one of you are going to have moments where you're going to ask yourself, where are the other nine? Jesus asked the question. So don't, so if Jesus asked the question, we can do the same thing. Because you can easily say, well, your motivation got to be right and stuff like that. I get that. But until you walked a mile in somebody's shoes, you're not qualified to say that. We can tell that to people because we've walked in, in those shoes. So we can tell people that we're still happy in the things of God. We love people. And we do the and we do these things because this is a divine assignment from the Lord. He crumbled by Sunday. Hallelujah. So with that said, Hallelujah. Welcome to our world. You have a blessed day. We'll be talking to you again real soon. Now you get a little bit of idea what it feels like to be apostle and prophetess. Yeah. Welcome to our world. Talk to you soon. Thank you.